All right. Just a quick video, I hope. It probably won't be since I said that though. So, this is one of the problems that's given me trouble in the past. Um, I was able to answer it before correctly, but personally, I like to have a mathematical explanation for an answer. I'd like to be able to justify why an answer is correct mathematically. To me, it's much more convincing. So this is the solution that I came up with. If you look at the SOA sample solutions, uh, question I would think 138, I'll post it at the beginning of the video, but they just verbalize through it in abracadabra, we get the right answer. So I don't really like that. So let me show you what I did and hopefully it makes sense. Um, comment below about the question about it or what you think about it, what do you think I did? Definitely open to your opinion. Or if you have a better way, that's even better. I like that. So please comment if you do. All right, this is what the setup is. Uh, this is the information we're given. I wanted to just write this down from the get go. Okay, we're given the joint density function. Okay, uh, f of x, y is 1 over 50. And these are the constraints of my variables. So I have it, a picture here. Every time you draw, well, anytime you have a question regarding a joint density, uh, distribution, you should absolutely uh, draw a picture. So here's my picture, not too interesting. Okay, it's just where x and y are positive and basically less than 10. So this is the region of my concern. And hopefully if you have had some um, practice this sort of thing, you know actually this is a uniform. This is a uniform distribution because the area of this triangle, one half base times height, base and height are both 10, one half is 50, Uniform is always one over the area. This is absolutely uniform. And it has to be that way if, if the density function is a constant anyway. So, all right. Um, we basically have a machine that has two components and X and Y are the lifetimes of each of those components. Okay, T is the operational time of the machine. The question asked me to find the expected operational time. So the question asked me to find what is E of T? Okay, we are after what is E of T? So um, let me just sort of set this up uh, to begin with. There's a couple different ways you can do this. I mean, you can do sort of a mixture approach, which is what the, the, the SOA website tried to do. They just verbalize it though. I can do that, but um, it's still kind of hand wavy, right? Abracadabra. Um, or remember what you can do is you can actually find uh, the CDF of a distribution, this is a distribution of t, which I haven't labeled what t is, but we will. And uh, then we can either take the derivative, find the PDF, find the expected value that way, or I can use the Darth Vader, Darth, Darth Vader rule, which I have no idea why it's called that. But um, that's what I'm going to do actually. So what is t? t is the operational time of the machine, and the question says that the machine operates as long as one of the components is working. So if you think about it for a second, if these are my lifetimes, uh, of each component individually, then T must be the max. It's the max lifetime. It's the max between X and Y. So order statistics. Okay, what I want to do is I would like to come up with the CDF of T. The CDF of T. Kind of tricky because my region is a triangle. It's not too bad though, actually. Let me reason through it uh, with you. So I want to find um, the probability that t is less than t, right? So f of t, capital F of t, of t, which by definition is the probability that t is less than little t, uh, is equal to what? <clears throat> well, this is saying that the max is less than t, less than or equal to t. And this is set up perfectly for the max. If the max is less than t, that means both of my random variables are less than t. So this tells me that the probability uh, that the x lifetime component 1 is less than t and the lifetime of component 2 is less than t. We cannot say anything about independence, so I cannot break these up or anything like that. So that's kind of sucks. But I can do something with this, right? I'm going to need two integrals. Let me show you what I mean. 
Because it depends on where T is. And it all depends on uh, where T is, which, and if you look at this picture, it depends on whether T is between 0 and 5. Let's make this T equals 5. Well, let's make, sorry, let's make this X equals 5. Let's make this Y equals 5. If I'm in this orange square, in other words, if T is in this orange square, okay, if T is in here, let's pick a T right here. This is how you need to approach um, this type of problem if you're going to find the CDF. If T is in this region, anywhere in here, if T is between 0 and 5, then that's going to give me part of my CDF. What I mean is, is that this is equal to this probability, this is a straightforward computation, straightforward double integral, this is equal to the integral from uh, 0 to t, 0 to t, it's just a rectangle, in fact it's just a square, of the joint distribution function, 1 over 50 uh, dy dx. Okay, easy computation, and again, let me, let me just uh, point out what I said, this is only, very important, this is for 0 less than or equal to t less than 5. We absolutely need that. Okay, my CDF is going to be piecewise. So this is equal to, I mean, this is easy. I mean, there's no x or y. So this is just t squared over 50. t squared over 50. So that's part of my CDF, part of my cumulative distribution function. Now I need to deal with the trickier part. The trickier part is when is, what if t is greater than 5? What if t is greater than 5? So uh, let me give myself some room, okay? All right. Keep in mind that we're after what is the expected uh, value of t, the expected operational time, okay? So let's deal with the other piece. Um, again, what if t is greater than 5? Draw your picture to really see what's going on here. Pictures are your friend, okay? What if my t is in this region? If t exceeds 5, let's say t is right here. Here's t, here's t, whatever, right? Now I'm looking at this. Now if t exceeds uh, 5 on the x-axis, and it also exceeds 5 over here. Here's my t here. If it's in this region, then I need to find, I'm still going to look at the same probability, but I need to basically find this, this area actually. I need that area, right? So bear with me here. I, I hope that this makes sense to you, okay? So for, for, 5 uh, less than or equal to t less than or equal to 10, okay, we have, again, I'm looking for uh, the CDF, okay, so we have the following, we have that capital F of t, okay, uh, this is equal to, now, I need to find what is that area, okay, what is that area, I'm actually not even going to do an integral, in fact, I didn't have to do an integral in the previous one either. What is this area? How would you compute this area? Well, what I can do is I can basically compute the complement. I could do this. This would be a trapezoid, okay? But I could also just find the area of this triangle as well as find the area of this triangle. No matter where T is, T being between 5 and 10, I'll get a triangle here and I'll get a triangle here. So how do I find the area of the blue? The area of the blue is exactly the entire area, the entire area being 50. Minus this triangle here. What is the area of this triangle? Well, this distance here is 10 minus t. This distance here is also 10 minus t, actually. This is also 10 minus t. Because if uh, this x equals t, then y equals 10 minus t. So if you like, you can list these ordered pairs, okay? Uh, let me just draw a picture right here. Okay, convince yourself, this is just some geometry, okay? If I take this triangle, 
then this is 10 minus t. This is also 10 minus t. Okay, I mean, mess around with this a little bit. Uh, convince yourself, right? This is the point right here. This is the point t comma 10 minus t. Right, so the height is 10 minus t. And this point right here, this is 10, but this is t. So that distance is 10 minus t. So hopefully that's not too bad, right? So if I want the area of the blue, it's the entire area minus the two orange triangles. The entire area is 50 minus one of the orange triangles, one half base times height. The base and the height are both 10 minus t squared minus one half base times height. Okay, triangle one, triangle two. Divided by, divided by the entire area. The entire area, which is 50. Now something to keep in mind is that you can only do this if you have a uniform distribution. That's one of the things that allows me to do this. All right, this is only for t between five and 10. Simplify this slightly. Okay, so this tells me, this tells me that f of t, okay, again, the probability, the same formulation as before, and let's write that out before, just as we did before, there's a probability uh, that uh, t, uh, sorry, the min is less than t, so which is x less than t and y less than t is equal to this. Just simplify this slightly. The 50 over 50 is 1. This is 1 minus 10 minus t squared over 50. A couple of things you should notice. First of all, this is only true for t between 5 and 10. If t is 10, I get 1. We better. I mean, CDF has to basically equal 1 after uh, values, specific values of t, right? Okay, so that's quite important. Let's write down our CDF now. We have everything. This is part of my CDF, and then I have the piece from before. So I'm ready to write that down. So the sort of first conclusion is the following. Okay, so for t equals the max of x and y, we have the CDF, right? f of t, the CDF of the max, is piecewise defined. If you recall, it was equal to t squared over 50 if 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 5. And it's equal to this business otherwise. It's equal to 1 minus 10 minus t squared over 50 for 5 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 10. This looks good, this looks good. We now need to answer the question, okay? So you may be thinking this is, I don't know, maybe frankly you just think it's annoying that I did all this work before I could even answer the question, but this is one approach, okay? Always open to suggestions. This is what I'm doing. I don't wanna take the derivative, because, I mean, that's annoying. We could, I wanna find the expected value, right? I wanna find expected value of t. I'm going to use an important um, method of finding the expected value. Sometimes it's called the Darth Vader rule. I'm going to find the integral uh, of the survival function. Okay, so hopefully you're aware of this. Um, maybe I'll make a video. I've been considering it, making a video for the proof of this. It's not the most elementary proof. But it's also not the, the most difficult one either. You should also know, you should note, you should note that this is true. This is for any actually distribution function. Okay, note that the expected value of t is equal to the integral over the domain, over whatever values I'm concerned with, of one minus uh, the CDF. Okay, and in this case, in this case, uh, my values here are gonna be zero to 10. Okay, this is actually true for any um, distribution, and uh, specifically, it's can be used for the distribution we have here. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. I need to break it up because my CDF has um, described two different intervals here, right? So, um, of course I have absolutely no room, but that's all right. Let's see if we can make it work. Okay, so 
the expected value of t is equal to the following. I need to go from 0 to 5, 0 to 5, of 1 minus the CDF, 1 minus t squared over 50 dt. And I need to add that to, now I need to take the integral from 5 to 10, 1 minus this. That ends up just being that. So 10 minus t squared over 50 dt. We can compute this. This is not too bad. I mean, this is just calc 1, basically, right? This is equal to, now, this is t. Uh, this is going to be here. This is going to be minus t cubed divided by 150 using the power rule in reverse going from 0 to 5 plus do not expand this just basically do a use substitution without doing it right you need to be comfortable with this sort of thing this is going to be uh, negative negative 10 minus t cubed divided by 150 going from 5 to 10 okay um, if you're concerned about this sort of thing, I mean, you can always differentiate and make sure you get the integrand back. So this one checks out. This one also checks out, right? This one checks out as well. If I distribute, if I, if I bring the three down, subtract from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside, negatives cancel, right? So I get exactly what I want. Plug in my endpoints. I don't want to do it because I'm running out of room, but this is just the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is easy. Uh, just plug in the endpoints and this is equal to five, which is my answer. So the expected value uh, is 5. Tell me what you think. Comment on the video. Um, again, if you have a more efficient method that can be backed mathematically, okay, I mean, I know the argument for why it's 5. I can go through that. It makes sense and everything, but it's not, I mean, it's not precise. I want precision. So leave me a comment about what you think. A comment if you have a better way. Um, Subscribe, like the video, thank you.